Thank you for being back at God's house tonight. Let's open up our service in prayer. All right, we've got a lot of prayer about. We've got a lot of folks out. got a lot of folks texting. Uh, flu, sickness, uh, a lot that's just sick. Amen. So this, and look, we got some vacationing. So, But we're back in God's house. Amen. Anybody else got a special request tonight? If not, let's all stand our feet and everybody that's really enabled, let's come and gather around the altar. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> let's, fit, let's use the altar. Amen. When we can. Remember the names that's posted on this uh, uh, cross. Amen. Pray for revival. Pray for each other. Pray for all of those that are sick. Like we said, uh, there's many. Uh, lift each other up to the Lord. Amen. Pray that God will uh, give us a stir. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Fathers, we hope.
coming. How many could welcome the coming of the Lord tonight? Boy, I could welcome him. I can say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Now, if you can't honestly say that in your heart tonight, now I know we've got lost family members and friends and neighbors we'd like to see saved. And I hope and pray they get in. Praise the Lord. But I could say, come quickly, Lord. Uh, I tell you, I'm glad this world's not my home. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm going to a place where there's no heartache and there's no pain, no sickness, no sorrow, no crying, for the formal things are passed away. Isn't that good? There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Praise the Lord. The new Jerusalem. Praise God. Well, you know what I'm telling you? That song's right when it says, what a day that'll be. Amen. What a day that'll be. Whatever you do, church, don't give up. You keep praying. Amen. You keep seeking. You keep praying for your lost loved ones and your friends and neighbors and family. Uh, listen, I believe as long as there's breath, there's hope. Amen. Praise God. All right. I didn't ask the Lord to bless this offering. So after offering plate passion, let's fellowship in Jesus. Shake somebody by the hand. As you done sit down, that, amen, 393. Wait till I get there, honey. Amen. When we all get to heaven. Street of gold, gates of pearl. Everybody.
may be seated if you can. All right tonight, I wonder who's got something on their heart. Well, let's get right in the Word of God then. Amen. How many's got your Bibles? Let's give God a good wave off and love your Bible. Don't be ashamed of it. going to be in the book of 1st Corinthians tonight and Philemon some of them pronounce that Philemon amen that's right before Hebrews but uh, I'm gonna you don't have to turn I tell you what just turn to 1st Corinthians chapter number 3 I believe is what we're going to be at 1st Corinthians chapter number 3 I'm going to read a verse of scripture there, and then I'm going to go to the book of Exodus. And you don't have to turn there unless you want to mark it in your Bibles. That that will be fine. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Ask the Lord. Jeff Kennard, would you uh, bless the reading tonight? Amen. Let's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. I'm going to begin. Let's see here. Let's go to verse number 8. Amen. For sake of time. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You're God's husbandry. You're God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I've laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth. 
thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You may be seated. I'm going to quote one more scripture out of the book of Philemon, or ever how you're Philemon, ever how you want to say that. Um, in verse 1, it says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, and uh, Philemon, our dearly beloved, and fellow laborer. You probably know where I'm headed tonight. But before, yeah, I'm going to read some scripture out of the book of Exodus. Amen. I made reference to this on Wednesday night, and the Bible says in Exodus chapter uh, number 18. I'm going to begin in verse 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. I think I read that scripture to you on Wednesday night. Uh, I'm just going to, if you'll just bear with me for a few moments, I'm not real sure. I think I know where I'm going. Uh, amen. According to what God's laid upon our heart, but uh, I guess I got two sermons in one, but I'll promise you I'll try to keep it quick. Amen. If thou shalt do this thing and God command thee so, then sh thou shalt be able to endure and all these people shall also go to their place in peace. Just by way of introduction, amen, tonight, Jethro cautioned Moses. If you'll go back to verse number 18 of Exodus, if you may have not have turned there, I probably should have had you to turn there. He says, thou, shalt, thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Jethro was cautioning Moses about the task that he had before him. Jethro was telling Moses, amen, that some of these things are going to be too heavy for you. And then in the previous, or, or the latter scripture that we read, he goes on to say that more or less here's, in Ebolian terms, Moses, we're going to give you the heavier matters, but the small matters that come up, we're going to judge. But those heavier matters that come up, amen, those larger things, amen, that concerns, we're going to bring it before you. And let me just say this, the size of the task from, for 40 years of leading the children of Israel was enormous. Now, I don't think we grasp, amen, uh, the, uh, the enormous task that it was that Moses had upon him. Now, don't you forget, uh, God was with Moses. But God never intended for Moses to carry it all by himself. Uh, I thank God for the deacons of going home church. Uh, and it's not just the deacons. I thank God for the men of the church. I thank God for the women of the church. Uh, and when I say that, but God did give a special place, amen, for deacons. Uh, that's the word of God. If you read the book of Acts chapter 6. And he gave deacons, amen, over the administration, over to, to take care of the widows and to take care of a lot of different things. I'm not going to preach on that. But God never intended for Moses to say, here, Moses, it's yours, it's yours alone. And uh, no doubt he had to learn to share the task. I'll be honest, as a young pastor, uh, many years ago, as God let us begin this work, 
uh, I, you know, I'll be honest, to begin with, I thought, man, I, I felt like it all was on my shoulders. And when I felt like that, now, I, I had my dad, and he was a, a former deacon, amen, had been a deacon for many years, and he was on the, uh, started on the deacon board here. And uh, th- I'm not saying, but I, I, when I say that, uh, I went for a few years, I thought, uh, I, I took, I guess, things personal. And when I say personal, uh, I tried, I felt like I was trying to do it, Brother Adam, you know. But I learned some things. I learned some things early on in the ministry. And when I say that, um, I had to learn to share the task. Uh, I, through the years, I've been called a dictator. Where do you go to church? You go to going home. Oh, you're talking about Jeff Duncan's church. First of all, I want to say this ain't Jeff Duncan's church. I'm your pastor, but this ain't my church. If you ever hear me refer to it as my church, I mean it our church. Don't nobody ever misinterpret what I say. Okay? First of all, it ain't my church. But listen, uh, sharing is part of leading. Let me say amen there. Sharing is part of leading. God let me be the, your leader. God let me be your pastor. And I think, and I'll say it again, thank God for do- godly deacons. Some people don't have a clue what a deacons go through. Some people don't have a clue what their wives go through. Now, I'm not up here drunk pity for the deacons, pity for your pastor. Amen. But some people have no clue. Uh, Matter of fact, uh, I've asked some deacons before as they uh, were served under the junior deaconship before we put them on the board. They got a, uh, by the bylaws and constitution of this church, they'll serve, uh, amen, a little time as a junior deacon and then they'll be ordained as a deacon. Amen, before they're put on, they'll be ordained. And uh, I've asked them before, you know, after they get started in a little while or even even before we ordain them, I said, "Did did you realize the task? And I've had them to tell me, no, preacher, I, I didn't realize the task. I believe that's the way Moses was, amen. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we realize, amen, the enormous task that Moses had on him. But thank God he had, thank God he had a few around him, amen, and he had God with him. And as I'm thinking about this tonight, amen, listen, I, I said Wednesday night I, I thought started to preach on, amen, is the uh, when the load's too heavy, or, or does the load ever get heavy? Uh, I believe, first of all, Jethro wasn't pointing out a problem uh, with no solution. Amen. He said, Thou shalt provide out of all the people, in verse 21, able men. Uh, listen, everything that this church needs, or everything this church will ever need, is right here. And when I say that, listen, he, he didn't have to look somewhere else, amen, to get that. Amen. They, they were people able to help him right there in his own flock. I mean, he, he just had to find them. And then, amen, the Bible says in verse number 22, amen, they shall bear the burden with thee. So let me say, Jethro, again, wasn't pointing out a problem with no solution. He said, I've got able, there's able men, and these able men are right there among you. And when you fight, more or less, when he finds those able men. Now, by the way, when I say able, uh, that's about that's the way it is today. Amen. Everybody ain't qualified to be a deacon. Everybody ain't qualified to lead a congregation. Everybody's not qualified to do that. But we all have our part. We all have, amen, a part in the work of God. I mean, listen, so, so it says, and then they shall bear the burden with thee. Amen. I, I said it. You've heard me say it since uh, last Sunday night. We need each other. Hey, we need each other's help. We need, hey, we, I'll say it again. We need each other's help. We don't need criticism. Amen. That's the, hey, criticism is of the devil. You ever been around somebody all they can do is criticize? I was around somebody yesterday, and I said, when, when are we going to say something positive? When are you going to say something positive? I mean, there been somebody that said, all they were was negative. Negative. Criticism ain't of God. Negativity is not of God. And listen, it, shouldn't, it even, shouldn't even uh, come out of our mouth anything negative. But although it does, doesn't it? 
because we're human and we're flesh. But the next time we do, we ought to, we ought to catch ourselves. But, but I'm saying we, don't, we need help, each other's help. We don't need criticism. Uh, so, see, so he said that they shall bear the burden with thee. In other words, they would help him. They wouldn't discourage him. I ought to be, I, I ought to want to be a help to you. You ought to want to be a help to me. You wouldn't want, you, you ought to not do anything that would discourage me. I ought to not I want to do anything that would discourage you. Amen. Listen, so, so they would help him. In other words, if he had let, if he would let them. I hope you'll let me help you, but you have to let me help you. Through the years, I've preached and preached and preached at Miss Mildred. I've preached and preached and preached, and amen. And uh, then for years, and people sit under the ministry for years. And then later on, amen, there'll be something arise, or there'll be something that'll come up, and things that I preached on, things that I've tried to teach, and that I've taught, amen. And I'm thinking, where have you been? Where have you been? I mean, there's, there's been things that I, I preached and I thought, and, 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 they, and they still won't do it. They still won't take counsel. People still won't take, amen, the teaching, the things they've been taught. They, I, I, I just wonder sometimes, amen, where, where have you, what are you listening to? But you've got to let me help you, and I've got to let you help me. Moses, amen, listen, they were folks there to help Moses if he would let them. Somebody say amen there. And I'm sure, amen, they had, they had to learn. I'll tell you what, we need to, we need to learn to offer ourselves for help. You, know, you ought to not just assume I'll help you. I shouldn't just assume that you'll help me. We ought to offer that. We ought to offer that in our actions. We ought to offer that in our, in our verbal words to each other. We, we need, I need you to, hey, I need you sometime to say, preacher, if there's anything I can do. Now, listen. You say, oh, but if I do that, people will take advantage. Well, about, listen, quit worrying about that. Just offer your help. It does me good, amen, when I've had preachers, amen, call me and say, I just want you to, just want you to know, amen. And I'm talking about preachers that are not even in, my, in the conference that I'm in. They'll say, preacher, I just want you to know. You don't have to say nothing. Or I ain't want nothing. I just want you to know I'm praying and praying for you. You know what that is, Jeff? That's encouragement. You know what that is? That's help. And then they'll offer their help. So I'm saying we need to learn to offer our help to one another. You know why we don't do that, though? You're afraid that somebody won't help and that you'll be obligated to do it. Now, I have been around folks before. Is there anything you need? Anything you need? Anything you need? Just call me. And when you call them, they ain't there. If I tell you if there's anything you need, as God is my witness, I don't care what time of the night it is, if I'm able. Now, if I'm sick and I ain't able, that's a different story. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. And you ought to understand that. But if you call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, whenever, hey, I'll do my very best to help you. We ought to offer our help. Now, it may have taken some time for them to do it like Moses was wanting them to do it or like Moses was leading them to do it, but they could learn. Let me say amen there. After all, what's greater, the man that can do the work of 10 men or get 10 men to do the work? <laughs> Hallelujah. There's many hands makes light work. Many hands makes light work. Somebody said one time, uh, I don't work hard, I work smart. I had a boss man one time, I'll just... Um, just say from just pointing out. I had a boss man one time. I learned him. 
I learned how to work smart, Brother Lord. What do you mean? He made you feel like you could do nothing. How many has ever been around somebody like that? That you didn't know nothing? That you didn't know how to do your job? And you, and you couldn't do it? So, I, so, so every time he'd get around me and, and some other guys, I mean, he'd end up, let me show you how to do this. And I, and I, you know, and I'm thinking, man, why are you making me feel like I don't, I know how to do this. Why are you making, so I, I learned, I thought, yeah, you come on. You show me. You know why? He ended up doing the work. I ended up letting him because he wanted to show me. Anybody been there beside me? Work, don't work hard, work smart. Now, that could be applied both ways. Everybody with the preacher. Many hands makes light work. That's the same way in this bus ministry. That's right of the social media. And I thank God that who's, whoever's taking that and bearing the brunt and sacrificing, God bless you for that. I know I've, I, I keep harping on it, but, but we need each other. And then secondly, the ministry could not, this ministry at Going Home Church, could do, it, it, could do, it could not do near what we're doing and what we have been doing without everybody's help. Without everybody sharing the load. I, listen, I've never felt like it's all about us. We should never feel like it's all about us. I mean, listen, it takes a lot of people all pulling together to be as effective as possible in any ministry and in every ministry. It takes everybody working together. I made a comment this morning. Vacation Bible school. Thank God. But I'm, I, I, it broke my heart. Now, when I say that, amen, let me just say, uh, I mean, for, for, for a prominent Baptist church to p give a plug, amen, to, to go, get your kids to going home, that, that, that's, a great, that's a great compliment. That's a great compliment, amen, to another church. And then how the enemy throwed a wrench in it. Now, not only that, it's the same in our bus ministry. Our bus ministry is suffering. Uh, I mean, how folks and other churches were encouraged and motivated, amen, through this bus ministry. How people that would respond, amen, when I, when I, I wouldn't take pictures every week, amen, of, of who showed up. I didn't want it to, I didn't want it to be like we were bragging, but I was a bragging on God. All God people say it. And then, and then I'd get response, how, man, how, you know, it's like, how many churches did we help? How many churches, amen, that saw that, that, that hears it on Facebook, that me are preaching on it, amen, that we help? How many, how many uh, ministries, how many bus ministries have been uh, birthed because of this one? How, how many got encouraged they, to do more with the youth because our example? And you say, preacher, how do you know that? Because it's been witnessed to me. It's been, it's been brought to my attention. Amen. I mean, work days. We come together at work days. Man, I'll never forget we had them. Listen, we had, when I say we, I called for a work day many years ago. I mean, we've done several work days around the church. Amen. Thank God. And you know what? We all pull together and we all help each other. And that's what it takes, amen. And I'll get to I'll get to other things later. But I had one one pastor, amen, stopped out here one day, and the, you, there was a bunch out here pulling grass out of those rocks, pulling grass, pulling weeds out of those rocks, and I and it, it was like, how do you get them to do that? And I thought, it ain't me getting them to do nothing. Are you with me? But it was an encouragement, amen. They, he was more or less saying, "Boy, I wish I could get, I wish I could get the church I pastor to work together and to come together as good as they do here." Let me thank God for people that are compliment your church. Car show, the man, this last car show wasn't in the blessing. God bless it, amen. Every, every, every labor of love that was given, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it, amen. But we couldn't have done it without your sacrifice. I mean, and it was a success, and, ble and not just a, it was a blessing to others. We got other people wanting our youth to come and do it, and us receive the money for it. I mean, isn't that good? 
I mean, that, that's good. Thank the Lord for that. But in, in, in Philemon that we read a while ago about, he called them fellow laborers. I mean, what is a fellow laborer? It's, is it someone who watches others do all the work? <laughs> no. Is it someone who does all the work? No. Or is it someone who works with others to accomplish something? That's a fellow laborer. It's a co-laborer. It's a companion in labor. It's a fellow helper, laborer, or worker. Amen. And let me just say this. God's called all of, he, all of us, amen, to be laborers. Will you say that? Will you say amen to that? Cause all of us, amen, to be laborers. And when I say that, amen, in our reading, amen, this, this, uh, just a few minutes ago in 1 Corinthians, amen, chapter 3 and verse number 9, but that is his written, I, well, I'm wrong one. Verse number 9, for we are laborers together with God. You're God's husbandry. You're God's building. He included everybody that's saved to be a laborer, a fellow laborer. Amen. That, there's no such thing as an un, if you want to quote it this way, an unemployed Christian. I don't like to call it employed, but there's no, there's no such thing as not a fellow laborer in Christ. At the Great Commission is for everybody, every man, woman, boy, and girl. That's the reason, amen, they, uh, for this evangelism thing. It's for everybody. Go, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. He's equipped everybody. He's called. Can I get a witness? Amen. Preacher, that ain't saint my thing. You don't have to pray about doing God's service. Herman Ostries, and I may have used this uh, illustration before. Herman Ostries. Barn floor was under 29 inches of water because of a rising creek. And the Nebraska farmer lived, uh, or excuse me, invited a few friends to a barn raising. He needed to move his entire 17,000 pound barn to a new location more than 143 feet away. His son Mike devised a lattice work of steel tubing, nailed, bolted, and welded onto the inside and outside of that barn and hundreds of handles were attached and after one practice of 344 volunteers slowly walked the barn up a slight incline each supporting less than 50 pounds in just three minutes the barn was on its new foundation 17,000 pounds the body of Christ can accomplish great things when we work together and you say, preacher, why are you preaching a message like that tonight when we, we have a church that does that? I don't want it to stop. I don't want it to end. We need, we need to work together. Uh, there's strength in numbers, aren't they? I talked about a pencil the other day. Has anybody ever tried that analogy to take one pencil and break it? The pencil's probably too high now. Them number two, I understand that. But I tell you, if you try to put two pencils Rather than one, it's hard, folks. Uh, uh, listen, you may get, they may be some of you men in here may get two pencils. You may even get three, but let me tell you, they'll get to the point you won't break them. You wouldn't be able to, there's strength in numbers. And listen, God's, and, and let me just say this, God has equipped everybody he's called. There's different gifts. Everybody can pray. Let me say tonight, everybody can pray. You pray for your church. This church needs prayer. This church always needs prayer. There's no time you should not be praying for your church. And we need, we need strength. And then you pray for your pastor. I always need your prayers. And I'm going to tell you, somebody's been praying for me. Hey Amen. I know. That. You say, how, do you, how is that prayer? Because I have felt the prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know what the enemy wants done? He don't want me to enjoy coming to God's house. Did, somebody help me. The enemy don't want me to enjoy, and you being your pastor, hey man, enjoy coming to God's house. But I'm going to tell you, God's been giving me a joy. 
God's been giving me an umph, amen, to be in the house of the Lord. You can pray for me. You can pray for your missionaries. Preacher, we, we, we don't monthly support missionaries. No, but we, we try our best to help those that come around or come through. All God people say it. The laws, you can pray for the laws. Don't give up praying for your lost loved ones. Everybody can pray. Keep a praying. And I'm going to tell you, pray for your family. Get them in God's house. You say, I've been praying for my family. but Keep inviting them to God's house. We're going to have a big day at going home church. When I say that, I think we need to have a big day. I don't know when I'm going to call it. That we invite somebody, let's get somebody, push to get somebody to say, please come with me. On a certain Sunday morning, please, I beg you. You say, well, why is that important? Because, listen, they ain't getting it out there. Amen. Get them in here where they can get the word of God. There's no, nothing wrong having a big day, a friend and a family day. How many is with me? To get them in here. Amen. There's different talents. God isn't interested in how many talents you have. What? God's not interested in how many talents you've got. There's different talents. He's interested in how well you use the talent you have. And it ain't how many you got. It's how many. It's it's how you're using the one you have. Preacher, I don't have a talent. Well, you may not can play the piano. You may not. Uh, you may not play the guitar or the drums or or anything. Amen. But I tell you one thing: you can do. You can sit back there and pray for your preacher. And you can pray for those that are playing. All God's people say it. He's interested in how well amen, you use your time. And singing in the choir. Don't let the devil cheat you out of singing in the choir. Well, I don't, I, I don't consider myself a singer. I don't care if you don't or not. You've done told on yourself because you've already been in the choir. All God people say it. And then we let the enemy cheat us, and I have to get up here and beg, come to the choir, come to the choir. Now, you say, you don't have to do that, come anyway. Well, I maybe won't beg you next time. Let's see how many comes to the choir. How many's getting my point? Listen, it ain't how well we sing. Listen, I've always just tried to teach this choir, just sing by letter. Rire back and let her fly. <laughs> Hallelujah. As long as we're making a joyful noise unto the Lord, the Spirit of God will be in there. I, I, you know what excites me? When we've had congregational songs, I get some of you in the choir. Because you're the congregation choir. Amen. And it sounds good. There's times I've done that, and I was, it's just thrilled my heart to hear you. No more than we had in the choir this morning. We had a pretty good choir. Amen. For so many people being out. You know what the enemy tried to do? He tried to cheat me out of a blessing in the choir. Well, there ain't enough people here to come. Oh, yes, they are. Are you with me, church? There's, there's different talents. There's singing. There's teaching. Amen. There's, in, well, I have to call him. And there's encouraging. How many, how many know some, how many knows people that are encouragers? Now, there are very few and far between. But there are some people that it will encourage you. Amen. I've had, hey, I've had people that have tried to encourage me. And I'm, I'm not talking about the people, amen, that tries to, 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 to discourage, discourage you. I'm talking about for those that, man, and you know what? It, some people, it's all they can do to say a good thing about somebody. I mean, hey, man, uh, do, you, you, listen, if, if I got something you don't like, you don't have to tell me you don't like it. Amen. Everybody's different. I understand that. If you don't like the car I drive, you don't like the truck I drive, that's okay. I don't like yours either sometimes. You got the point? But because I don't particularly like, hey, I, hey, if it appeals to me, I like it. I don't care if it's a Dodge or a Ford or a Chevrolet or a Plymouth. Somebody say amen. Even a Studebaker. Somebody say amen. It don't matter as long as it appeals to me. You say, well, I wouldn't have one of those. Well, that's okay. But don't, don't discourage me because I like it. Amen. And, and so what I'm saying is, listen, I believe, I believe God's got people that just encourages other people. 
Some people wouldn't say nothing nice to somebody else or encourage somebody else if their life depended on it. I'm serious. I mean, I've been around people like that. They would not compliment. They would not encourage in no way because, and you know what? Most of the time when people that will not do that, that it's in their heart, they are, they're jealous. They're jealous. Uh, most of the time people are jealous. Amen. And that's the reason they will not compliment. And they will not encourage. Listen, I thank God he didn't put a heart like that in you. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. Amber Kate's driving a very nice Tahoe. Ain't it a Tahoe? Now, for you, it's saying, well, why didn't he compliment my car? There you go. You're jealous. <laughs> hey, man, you're jealous. When, when Jessica drove up in that new Honda, I thought, man, that's pretty. Are you with me? There you go. Why didn't he compliment my old car? But some people would not do that. I'm talking about though God, I believe, has given some people a ministry of encouragement to encourage other people. I like to say something that'll help somebody. I like to say something that'll help somebody feel good. Do you? If you don't have that heart in you to help somebody feel good, you need to come and ask God to help your heart. To help you somehow. and get Because it all goes back to jealousy and pride. Jealousy and pride. Hallelujah. Why am I getting off on that? We all have different abilities. God measures our service not by our ability. Now, you got to listen right here. God measures our service. I said different abilities. He measures our service, amen, not by our ability, but by our willingness. We have abilities, but he measures it by our willingness. Are you with? Hallelujah. Some people's outgoing. Some people's shy. Some people's lazy. Amen. But aren't you glad you're never alone? Hallelujah. But listen, he, God gives us different abilities, but it's what we do with that ability, how willing we are to be used. You that are mowing the grass, I don't know if everybody, I don't even know who mows it from one time to the next. I know. Several of you fellas have mowed it. You know what? Thank you. That's an expense the church don't have to pay. And you ought to thank God for that. You and ever who does. Amen. I know Jimmy and Kathy and some others have pitched in help and, and vacuum the floor and pick up paper and sweep and mop. Thank you. Those that help in the fellowship hall that feels like oh, I'm the only one that ever does that. You know what? Thank God for you. Thank God for you. And for you that want to help and say, and, and, and say I want to help, amen, then come, but don't just sit there. Do something. Yeah. All God people say it. Sure, there's always a place. That, but we all have different abilities, but it's our willingness to do it. There's no such thing as Christians who do not work. Wow. There's no such thing as Christians who do not work. If you're a child of God, you're going to do something. Amen for the Lord. And it's a work of service. I appreciate that devotion this morning, Brother Tony. It's a work of service. I mean, listen, you can't build a home without work. You can't build a church without work. God promises there will be a payday one day, though. How many looking forward to that payday? In verse number 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Would you come to pen? There's going to, listen, there are rewards on this earth. You believe that? There are rewards on this earth. God blesses us. I believe if you got a roof over your head tonight, that's a reward. 
You got food on your table, that's a reward. Amen. You got good health, that's a reward. You got a car to drive and get to the house of God, that's a reward. Amen. There's rewards on this earth. If you want the best, you got to give your best. But it's got to be all unto God. You got to put first and seek first the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And then there's, there's blessings, but thank God there's rewards in heaven. And there's rewards etern in eternity. I'm going to ask you a question tonight. Are you willing to be a fellow laborer with God? What can, you say, preacher, what can I do? What can you do? What can you do in this church? What can you do at your job? Amen. In your own home, what will you do? I want us to stand our feet, a fellow laborer. I've just shared my heart with you tonight. I'm not really, pre well, I have preached. And I hope something has been a help to you. I want to help the church. And I hope something that's been said through this sermon has helped you tonight. So I'd like for every head to be bowed as Angie sings a song or whatever's on her mind. It'll, it'll be fine. I want to challenge the church to come and let's be fellow laborers together. And if you felt like the load's too heavy, God's got able men. If you want to say, I want to go to that altar and I want God to help our church, I want God to help me as a, as a fellow laborer in, this, in the house of God to do my part and not to let nobody detour me in what I need to be doing in the house of God. That's the message. Lord, as I come humbly, I ask you, God, to forgive me. God's people said, Amen. Amen. How many of you enjoyed the services today? Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope you feel as good as I do. Not in body, but in spirit. Amen. All right, if your hearts are clear, smile at somebody. And I want you to know, church, I love you. And I hope you know, I know you love me. But I love you. And if I never help you, you know where I'm at. Amen. All right. If your hearts are clear, you're at liberty to go in the field.